Hey YouTube, RJ's Adventures. Me and uh, Willie. Really? Me and Willie. We are uh, actually. I'm heading over to the NRA banquet dinner uh, this evening, and hopefully I'm gonna win a gun, or hopefully somebody at our table will win a gun. But the purpose of this video, and I've done this video several times. I've just, I've never liked the outcome out, so I deleted it, and. I've redone it, and I've deleted it, redone it. I don't want to step on nobody's toes. That's the last thing I want to do. Uh, a lot of you know I was a truck driver, and that's what got me thinking about this because I want to later become a boondocker. I want to get a Class A, I want to run around this country and look at everything I've seen out the windshield of the truck, but be able to do it in an RV and stop and get off on them little skinny roads I couldn't get the truck on. That being said, when I trucked, there was a lot of times I'd pull into a truck stop and there'd be an RV in there. Trucks don't have the, the easiness and the privilege of parking quite like an RV does, uh, especially a smaller RV. You big class A's, you know, even they get around a little bit easier than a 53 foot, 102 wide, 13, six tall trailer attached to a truck's got 270 inch wheelbase on it so the point of this video is courtesy I guess uh, when you let me switch this camera around if I can we're gonna, gonna let me all right well I might have to go and then come back but uh, this video is basically when you are parking around trucks uh, maybe I don't know, etiquette I don't know trucking RV togetherness etiquette? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Now, right, YouTube, I'm back. Now, if you look to my windshield, right there's an RV in a rest area. And he, he's perfectly fine. I'm just, you know, there's a truck over there. It's a big rest area. It's in central Indiana. My point I'm trying to make here, and I'm, like I said, I've done this video several times and it's, it's a tough one to do because I just don't want to piss nobody off I guess but say you're you're traveling you don't want to pay for a campsite and that's fine when I get on the road I don't want to pay for a campsite but say you come in to this huge rest area and it's midnight and it's through the week and there's two spots there's this one and there's that one so you pull into this one now you have a slide on for your uh, dinette and your your couch to slide out so you slide it out and now you're all good and comfy and you got your AC on, you got your heat on, whatever. You're comfy and you go to bed. Now about one, two o'clock in the morning, my log book that I have to do runs out of hours for me to drive. And I have to, by law, FMCSA says I have to take a 10 hour break. Now in this big old rest area, and I've stayed in this rest area and it's so slam full that they're parking over here up against the side. That's how full it'll get. So you're in this one, and you got your slide out, and you're all comfy, but this is the only one that's left in this whole entire place. So I come in, and I can't use that because your slide's pushed over now. And I guess that's the point I'm trying to make is don't put your slide out. Uh, it's just like if you, you go to Walmart, and you're staying at a Walmart, the last thing you want to do is throw your slide out, put your jacks down, pop your awning out, throw out your 12 by 14 piece of carpet and get your grill going. It's it's just etiquette, I think. Etiquette and courtesy. Uh, if you go into a truck stop, most truck stops like your Flying J's, they provide a place for RVs to pull in. Trucks aren't allowed in it. I honestly, I may step on some toes here. I honestly think that RVs should not be allowed in truck parking in truck stops. When I first started driving in 1979, truck stops were for trucks. They were not travel centers, they was truck stops. They've over, they've evolved into travel centers for everybody's traveling, I understand that. But with limited trucking, limited trucking, limited parking for trucks, it's hard for, for something that size right there. Where's he at? This size right here. That's a big, that's a lot of truck right there. It's hard for him or this guy 
to just park anywhere, mainly making the turns to get in. I, I've went in Walmarts down in Florida with all their pretty landscaping that I was allowed to park in. I couldn't hardly get in and out of it. It was that tight. So you're kind of limited to, to what you can park at when you're in a big truck. So getting back to the truck stop, I, my personal opinion, I don't think RVs should be allowed to go back in the truck parking. I think that should be 100% truck parking for the guys that the federal law says you have to stop and, and take a 10 hour break. You have to stop and take a 30 minute break in the afternoon or sometime during your shift, which is a 14 hour shift. And so when you're out traveling, you know, keep that in mind. And I've, I've watched so many videos that people have complained about the trucks being noisy. Well, if you go in a truck stop and you go back to the truck parking and these trucks are idling because it's 90 degrees out or it's 20 degrees out and they want to let them idle, then don't complain because they're idling because you're in their trucks, you're in theirs. Now, if they come into an RV park where you was and pulled up beside you and idled their truck up to 1,100 RPMs and kept you up all night, I, that might be a little bit different, but you're kind of going into their world. And yeah, like I said, I don't know if it's courtesy or etiquette. It's just, to me, it's kind of common sense. So there you have it. Uh, when there's only one spot, I don't care if there's 10,000 spots, one or 10, doesn't matter. Just don't set up home. You're only stopping in there to sleep anyways. The same as that truck right there just pulled in. That's, he's probably gonna come in here and take a break. That's all he's doing. You know, he's not gonna put his landing gear and detach and go to Walmart and come back. It's not, that's not what it's designed to do. It's designed to rest. So when you're boondocking, basically it's what you're doing is you're stopping and resting until you get to your destination, which is out in the Southwest and federal BLM land or state land in the Smokies, wherever you go. So there you have it. Just be courteous around these guys. You know, they move America without them. If all these trucks right now stopped at a snap of a finger, you wouldn't have toilet paper to wipe your ass in three days. Everything you got, they brought. So maybe it's a trucking video. I don't know. I just, one day I'm going to be out here in my class A and I understand how these guys are. And there's some clowns out here in, in campers and in these trucks. I understand that, but you know, I guess everybody's just got to get along. So next time you're out boondocking, you're in a Walmart, don't put your landing gear down. Don't set up home like you're, you're staying for six months and next time you're in a rest area or you do get back in your truck parking in a truck stop just remember you're in their world now you know so uh, you can't complain too loud but hey happy trails i'm heading over to this nra banquet and uh hopefully i'll win me a new pea shooter you never know and then uh unfortunately this weekend is the weekend i'm gonna winterize my camper so uh I'll video that, show you guys how I do it. I don't use chemical in the lines. I blow my lines out, and I'll walk it through step by step and maybe give you a new way to do it. Till next time, you guys be safe.